offer that as an easy, smart way to support GPD instead of pays $15 a month uh, that continues automatically month to month from your uh, credit card or your checking account. And that contribution can continue as long as you like. You never, I hope you don't forgive us, but you never really have to think about uh, when the last time you've, you've given to GPB. And it's an, an easy way to uh, to give to GPB on a monthly basis over the course of the year. Uh, and of course, your donation is tax deductible as well. $15 a month as a GPB sustainer gets you the combo that includes the 20 ounce mega mug and the long sleeve hooded t-shirt. And of course, you'll be supporting the storytelling on Here and Now, on Fresh Air. You'll be supporting Supporting the work of our news team here at GPB when you make that contribution at 800-222-4788 or gpb.org. Hello, I'm Nina Trogenberg, legal affairs correspondent for NPR News. From the inner workings of the Supreme Court to the legislative process in Georgia, GPB takes you there. NPR reporters around the world and GPB's news team around the state take you to wherever news is happening. Your financial support makes it all possible. So right now, while you're thinking about it, give online at gpb.org or call 800-222-4788 and thank you. It's easy to give, 800-222-4788 or gpb.org. Your support added to the contributions from listeners around the state makes it the most important and reliable source of funding for the programs you hear on GPB. You'll be joining listeners like Jacqueline Conlington in Villa Rica, uh, Frank Sanford of Tucker, Patrick Lee in Lawrenceville, Faroza Abdullah in Fayetteville, Grace Rayleigh in Aiken, South Carolina. It's, it's very easy to pull in a spot, of course, and especially when they're made sometimes only when the spot to the left and to the right is open. So it's easy to pull in then. It's hard to pull in a spot sometimes when there is a vehicle or a truck on either side of the open spot. If there is not a lot of room in the middle. And this parking lot right here really has pretty good space in it between you know this side of the parking lot and the parking spaces on the other side it's a good amount of space but if trucks was there i guarantee you uh, it would be tough for that tanker to pull in that spot but that's not my point my point is this it's a lot harder to back out of these spots when there's a vehicle on either side of you than it is to pull into them and it's a lot harder to back out of those spots when you pull in than it is to back in those spots so that you can just pull out when it's time to go. It's easier to back into those spots than it is to back out of those spots. You see what I'm saying? So again, and you know, you will argue, sometimes you'll pull in a spot, especially like on the end of the parking lot, um, so that when you back up, there is nothing that's supposed to be behind you. Sometimes you'll pull into that spot just because you want to face the woods or whatever. You know, you want privacy. And, you know, you can do whatever. You can be in the cab naked and no one is going to, with the screens open or whatever, and no one is going to see you, you know. So, for whatever reason, sometimes you might pull in, you'll pick a strategic spot and you pull in for privacy. But obviously, that's not the case there because this lot is right down the hill from the main entrance to the truck stop. So that's not why he pulled in. He pulled in, in my opinion, probably because it was easier to pull in than back into the spot in his mind. And maybe his backing is just that bad. Or maybe he had, you know, limited time left on the clock and knew that it would likely take longer to back in than to pull in you know if there's a specific reason that's one thing but for the guys that just does it just because they don't want to back up i'm, I'm telling you man you you serve yourself better working on backing up so that's that's one thing i wanted to point out to you the other thing is to my right now, I actually did see this, but I didn't uh, record it. It was, 
It's just really too late to get the camera. I, I didn't. Well, I didn't think it was gonna last as, <laughs> as long as it did. But that flatbed, that flatbed that has a space to our left, his right, and well, space on both sides. When you bag it into a space like that, it's best to pick out a specific spot, have a target, go for a specific parking spot. Instead of just backing into the open space and hoping that you know you 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 come to one of the spots, you, you hoping that you're closer to being in one of the spots, or planning on deciding which spot to go for once you start backing in, whichever one you're closer to, that's the one you go for. You see what I mean? Because it seems like that's what this guy did, and you, that. I, when you know when I first came out, that's kind of what I did. If it was open spaces, then I'll just bag up and wherever the truck land, then I'll try to get in a space that was closest to where the truck landed. You know, but nah, that's not the way to do it. For two reasons: one, just like any goal, when you have a specific goal, as much you know as possible to hit it. If you don't have a goal at all, it's, who knows where you end up? If you just bag into the open area. I mean that's that's nothing, you know. You're likely not to be in any parking spot. You're just gonna be crazy, <laughs> and likely you're gonna have to do more pull-ups than you would have had to do had you picked out a specific parking space and and went for that. That's one point, and the second point to that is that you get more practice by going for a specific space instead of just bagging into an open hole. You see what I'm saying? So why not just get that practice by going for a specific space? And so that's it, y'all. Uh, it was just two things that I saw real quick before I pull out that I wanted to point out to you. And now it's time for me to get moving, man. Yeah, y'all free. Y'all are free to ride along with me if you want to. Yeah. Courtney is still sick. She hasn't thrown up in days, but she won't eat. She won't eat dog food anymore. I think in the last few days I've gotten her to eat two hamburger hot dogs and I don't know if it's just she, she liked the hamburger and doesn't like the other ones claim to be hamburger but the, the I don't know they made completely different but she won't eat any of the other types of hot dogs she eat the ones that's bumpy and actually look somewhat like hamburger meat if you know what I'm talking about the other ones that's smooth, kind of look like the jalapenos, but it says 100% beef. She won't even eat those. Let me go while uh, the lane is blocked. And the doggy treats. Another driver. I was talking to this other driver. I think I got part of it on video. But I was talking to this other driver who had a dog. And the dog died and he gave me a whole bunch of doggy treats and she don't like that well she ate one of those out of three I gotta show you that too and the only reason I would continue feeding it to her is if that was the only thing she ate it doesn't look like she's gonna take to those too, too well either she ate one out of three But the stuff that's in those treats, man, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's just like candy. It's just, it's just junk food. So you do have to look at the ingredients to that stuff, just like you would if it was food for you. These are supposed to be treats. You pay an arm and a leg for treats. And basically all it is is junk food for dogs. Wheat, 
sugar, uh, corn, it's just junk, man. But when you see the marketing, you know, if, you're not, if you don't read the ingredients, you're gonna assume that it's, it's something good. I'll show you, matter of fact, I'll show you when I stop. I might as well make that video while I'm thinking about it.
the video on, I wasn't really planning on talking. I just wanted to show riding through Cincinnati at midnight. My 71. But, of course, this was midnight. So, anytime it's early in the morning, man. <laughs> That's what I be thinking. And so, of course, I end up talking. Different people have different times of day or night in which they are more creative, more productive, more alert. I can't say I'm more alert or even productive in the middle of the night. But if I've been sleeping and I wake up in the middle of the night or early in the morning, more so early in the morning, I'm definitely more creative. And it's hard to quiet my mind down. Too many ideas and everything start to flow. That's why I can't go to sleep but so early. Otherwise, I'll be waking up too early in the morning with ideas and thoughts. Man. Takes a lot of energy just to get back to sleep. <laughs> well, by the way, I looked at the video. I didn't mention it on there. Um, when you look at this video about the different ways to make money, I don't know, I might edit it again because I might include some I could have shown you some more footage of the different things that I'm doing but maybe I just do another video for that instead of holding this one up but listen especially if you go to the page and I'm talking about with the other additional ways of making money you have to pick out something that that connects with you something you feel good about and and check that out and stick to it for a while one of the biggest mistakes that people make and i i mean i do this but i obviously i'm aware of it i'm telling you about it but one of the mistakes that people make is to go from thing to thing and you never get the appropriate traction in any one thing so that it pays off the way you want it to pay off now my reason is, you know, I want to be, I mean, you know, I, I'm still, I'm interested in too many things. <laughs> but you have to resist that, you have to fight that, and you have to, I like, especially if you really need to make some money, you know, if, if you really need to generate some income, then you gotta stick with one thing and make that work for you, then go to the next thing. Like, to me, it's not an immediate need like that, so, And I know about so many different things obviously it's because I checked out and tested so many different things and now it's, it's too many things that uh, I would love to pursue to a greater degree and actually I'm thinking about another video too I'm thinking about another video where I'm going to show y'all some more ways and I'm actually thinking about letting y'all decide which one you want to see me see which one you want to see me use to generate an excessive amount of money I'm thinking about doing that for real and that will really show you because I think that will go a long way to helping people realize what's possible because I already know that it's possible. I, I, I've made money with all of these things, just not as much as I could have made if I would have been focusing on only one of those things. You see what I'm saying? So if you can make any amount of money in any of them, that means you can make plenty of money in any of them. You, you just gotta work on it and, and, and make improvements in different ways of presenting the information or presenting the opportunity or doing the marketing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm seriously thinking about doing that. Be on the lookout. If you see, well, well, well first it'll be another video about the different different ways to make money though. So 
You'll see another video about different ways to make money. I'm saying that you ain't seen the first one yet. So this is for the people, you know, that sticks around and actually watches my video. You got a heads up. I know most people, I know most people, you know, they're gone by now. Like, you know, this is not interesting. We don't want to get ill with hear what this dude got to say. But yeah, for the rest of y'all sticking around here. So first, be looking for a video that's gonna say three ways to, to generate money, truckers, wives, and spouses. Then there's probably gonna be another video that's talking about additional ways to generate passive income. And then if I go, and it's really gonna depend on y'all's comments, that's cool. But if I go the next level that I was just talking about, where I'm going to ask for y'all's um, suggestion on which way you want me to use to actually make, I'd say something like $10,000 by, I don't know, maybe by Christmas, something like that. And then that video is gonna be probably titled something like $10,000 challenge, the $10,000 challenge. That's what I'm gonna. Hey, this is a new. I think this is a new ramp. I don't remember this ramp right here prior to the scale like that. Anyway, yeah. So be on the lookout for that, y'all. Uh, yeah. I'm acting like I'm about to get off the. You know, stop recording. I'm not about to stop recording. At this point, I might as well record until I get to my. Pick up. Let's see what the scale does. I'll take that. If I pass, I'll take that. Yeah. It looks like the boys were working pretty hard yesterday evening when I got empty out here. Had a lot of trucks pulled over. should have been looking further enough ahead to have seen that. You see that? 
I should have seen that. I should have been looking far, far enough ahead to realize that this right lane ends. consideration for other drivers down the road. That's what I'm saying. First on the left, okay. 747. Okay, great. Yeah, y'all. That's what's up. So they didn't say whether they keep, uh, looks like trucks keep straight. Maybe the employees turn See if they gave me all of the pickup information this time. Last week, man, for some reason. Was it last week? Was it? Nah, this week. People not been giving me all the pickup information. Get there. Bring a pin and turn off the track. Bring a pin and turn off the track. Yeah, I like that. They give you down here.
never says anything about sliding the trailers, tandems. Disconnect trailer doing loading and unloading. Sit in front of the trailer until second flashing green light. Second flashing green light. Uh, then hook back up. Load is done. Live driver. Your load will be sealed in the back of your trailer. Your load, your seal will be, <laughs> your seal will be in the back of the trailer once you are loaded. Pick up all paperwork at the guard check. All right, cool. I gotta drop the trailer. Man, they come telling me they want me to move to another door, man. How you like that? Buddy. Could be worse though. They could have came and said your load is canceled. <laughs> so you know. Trailer too high up, man.
be careful.
right. Time to go play in traffic now. Go sit down, buddy. Sit down, buddy. Oh, I got to call the broker again. Yeah.